much mistrust, love's gone behind. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Elaine. If you're new here, a very, very warm welcome to you. Firstly, I just want to address that there is a massive storm going on outside. Oh my gosh, babe, I'm scared. I'm really scared. So if that's what you can hear, rumbling and like really scary sounding thunder, that is happening in my video and it's not happening in your world right now. It's really ironic because I was waiting all day to start filming once the construction noise stopped and then as soon as that stopped and I got ready to film, the storm hit. And this storm has been brewing for many days so it's quite a massive one. But anyway, I've gone ahead and filmed anyway because I really needed to get this done. This is the next installment in my 100 years of makeup series, 1980s, and I just love how this came out. I was really inspired to do a more sort of glamorous evening look. Nothing too tacky. I really wanted to try and, you know, give credit to the 80s because most people when they do an 80s look it just looks really tacky and unwearable and that just wasn't what I wanted to do. So I wanted to take inspiration from like the best parts about the 80s makeup and sort of put them all together to create a look that's actually quite wearable today and in fact when I was doing my research I noticed huge similarities between Instagram makeup and 1980s makeup like it made me realize that out of all the decades I've done the 80s is actually really similar to the kind of makeup we wear these days yet we all look back and scoff at it sure some of the techniques and some of the products may not have been quite as good and I do think some of the color pairings they used to do were not so flattering but like this eye look is just directly out of something that I saw online um, they loved smoky eyes, they loved winging the eyeshadow out, um, they just tended to use more cooler tones in general is what I saw and they loved going bold, uh, it was all about the bold eyes with bold lips with the bold cheek, they really didn't scrimp anywhere. There were a few things that I think really influenced the sort of power makeup of the 1980s, I think it was a bit of a reaction to the sort of hippie uh, no makeup makeup sort of look of the 1970s as well as the globalization of makeup, magazines uh, were really huge, sorry to the Americans but the Americanization of makeup around the world really led to that very bold you know makeup being seen everywhere and in fact we see that today as well Instagram is really uh, influencing how we do our makeup these days so we're all starting to look the same because we all do it in that very Instagram style oh my gosh can you not so I found the whole process of researching the 1980s extremely fascinating and just like all my other tutorials from the series I like to call them historically informed. I definitely do a lot of research behind the looks but I generally take what I like about the decade and put it into a slightly more modern context so that's why I can look like this and this is perfectly acceptable sort of makeup to wear to an event these days um, but it definitely does have that 80s vibe. If you do end up enjoying this tutorial then don't forget to give it a like for me and if you are new and you haven't yet subscribed I'd warmly welcome you to it would mean a lot to me and you'll get notified every week of when I upload videos so without further ado let's get into the tutorial so I'm gonna begin with foundation and I'm starting out with the Lancome Tint Adol ultra 24 hour foundation in 090 ivory this is a shade that's only available in the US so if you are in Australia then I would pick up the shade 008 because it's like the same sort of shade it's just a totally different numbering system here and I'm going to use my damp beauty blender to apply it I'm going to do two layers so this is just one pump one layer and then I'll put another one on on top this foundation gives a really nice sort of high medium coverage with one pump but a really nice full coverage with two so it's kind of why I want to do two coats because the 80s they loved a nice full coverage base so then I'm just popping in with that second layer and then I'm just going to conceal under my eyes with my Tarte Shape Tape in Fair Neutral then I'm going to set my base with powder I'm using the Kat Von D translucent setting powder and I'm also going to use my beauty blender for this as well the reason I like to use my beauty blender is it kind of push my gosh <laughs> The reason I like to use a beauty blender is it helps to kind of push the powder into your skin so it doesn't look quite as powdery but it still mattifies in a nice way. Now I'm not going to do any bronzing or contouring or anything for this tutorial but I am going to sculpt my face using blush. The 1980s they were obsessed with sculpting their face but they used blush primarily and it's a technique called draping which is where you put the colour on your cheeks but bring it up around your forehead and that as well it helps to shape the face but without bronzer or contour or anything I'm gonna go in with my benefit blush in dandelion which is the soft kind of pink color here it's quite cool toned and I am gonna do a pink lip today the 80s I think they either loved everything to be coordinated or everything to clash so today I'm going with a coordinated look so this is actually quite a subtle blush but I'm going to build it up and then I might judge whether I need to add a different um, more intense pink as well but 
I think because I'm so fair, I should be able to just build this one up. This technique is actually really beautiful on pale skin, so I quite like to do it sometimes. We're going my contour and bronzer and just sort of shaping and warming the face with blush. It's so pretty. But I'm going perhaps a little bit more intense than I normally would because the 80s. If you use little circular motions as well, um, you won't get a sort of stripy look. It'll really diffuse it as you work the blush into the skin. Now they didn't really highlight in the 80s, um, if anything they might have used more like an illuminating blush. But I am just going to add a little bit for my own satisfaction. I'm going to use the Too Faced Blinded by the Light Prismatic Highlighter, which I haven't used for a while, but I love this one. I'm going to put it right high up on the cheekbones and under the brow. So the 80s brows were definitely quite bold and big and it was all about like the power brow but they didn't look anything like our sort of Instagram brows today. I'm going to go in with a pencil just so that I can kind of more softly define them but they'll still be quite bold if you if that makes sense. So I'm going to try out this Australis pencil. I've never actually used this before but I thought I'd try it. It's in the shade light brown. And then I'm going to set my brows with my Urban Decay Brow Tamer, and this is in the shade Neutral Brown. And I feel like that has given me very bold power brows, but they're still looking quite hairy, <laughs> if you know what I mean, like not too filled in. The eyes, I'm actually going to do more of a neutral smoky eye, because the 1980s, yes, they did wear lots of bright colours, and they did clash a lot of colours in that, but some of their evening looks were actually really beautiful. When you take away some of the crazy hair and the outfits and stuff, when you actually look at the makeup, some of it's really, really beautiful in the 1980s. Like, the eye looks really stunning, some of the evening ones, um, and a lot of the time they were just classic kind of smoky eyes. I wasn't a huge fan of the ones like the navies, the blues, um, you often because they were paired with like a coral lip or something so I guess some of the color combinations I wasn't a huge fan of but they did love to really wing out their eyeshadow, very cat eye shape with the shadow and they also brought it right under the eye as well, sort of connected the shadow. Not too dissimilar to how we do our eyeshadows today except they didn't really do the giant wing that would cut through the eyeshadow like people do today. So I'm going to go in with my Tarte Tartlet palette today which has a lot of nice neutral shades. I'm just going to start out with Super Mum, which is a matte cream, and just sort of put this down on the eye as a bit of a base. I am going to try and keep it to quite cool tones though, so I'm going to go in with the shade Power Player, which is this nice kind of medium taupe shade that I can use as a transition, and just my Mecca Cosmetica blending brush, and I'm going to focus this on the outer sort of third of the eye. Then I'm going to take this Eco Tools blending brush, and the same colour, and I'm going to put that under the eye, like connect it to the outer third. Then I'm going to take this tapered blending brush by Hakuhodo and the colour Fashionista and we're just going to put that into that sort of outer portion of the eye. And then just go back in with my blending brush and softly blend all that out. Then we're going to do eyeliner. I'm going to use my Zoeva Graphic Eyes Pencil in Black to Earth. And we're going to apply this mostly right around the eye because they loved eyeliner on the top lash line and the bottom, really connected. I'm going to use my pencil brush to blend this out. Then I'm going to add mascara. I'm using the Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. Then I'm just going to pop on some false lashes. I'm not sure whether they wore false lashes very often in the 80s. It wasn't something that I could find much information on. But I imagine that they kept them for more special occasions, not day to day. Um, which this look is. It's a glamorous, more evening makeup look. So I'm going to apply these ones which are quite dramatic. These are the Exo Beauty Gold Digger Lashes. And then for lips I'm going to go in with the designer brand Matte Longwear Lip Gloss and this is in the shade 511 Everlasting. And as you can see it's a very very vibrant hot pink which I thought would be perfect for this look. Guess what just happened? My lights flickered. That was terrifying. Ooh. So that is the finished look there. I love how this look turned out. This is nearly something that I would wear 
myself for an event I'd probably just add a lot more warmth to the eyes because I typically like to wear a more sort of uh, warmer smoky eyes than the blacks but I love this lip color so much and I do really like the blush technique that we used as well so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for me because it does really help me out and if you want to help me out even more then giving this video a share on some, one of your social medias or to a friend or something that would enjoy it would really help me out as well if you missed my 1970s look I will link that up over here for you and if you want to go see the rest of the playlist right back down to 1920 then I'll link that over here. I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here and until next time thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.